Hi, I'm Rashawn Allwood, an organist and composer based out of Toronto, and welcome to Organist Launchpad, where we'll be doing a session here on playing jazz at the organ. So when it comes to playing jazz at the organ, there's a couple key things that are important to discuss, and I'm going to break them apart in this short presentation. The first is registration. We want to make sure that we sound jazzy in the sounds that we're getting out of the organ. The second one is voicings. We want to make sure that the way we're playing chords is idiomatic to the jazz language. And then, of course, we'll talk about some improvisation and we'll go through some chord progressions that are fun to practice and that you might be able to try out on your own. So let's start with some sounds. So the sounds we uh, want to stay away from are, in some ways, the kind of traditional neoclassical sounds, mutation, or mixtures and, and plenums are not so well suited to jazz. One thing which is definitely well suited to jazz are strings, celestes, mixed in with flutes. And, and that sound kind of borrows from the kind of smooth saxophones you get in a big band, you know, where they'll kind of go through all these different chords. And it's just very kind of smooth and, and pleasant. So, a nice string accompaniment is always nice to have, and I just couple that down to my pedal with some flutes down there for some nice pedals. The next thing to think about is some solo voices. So you might accompany on strings, but how do you want to play your melodies? And there are a couple great sounds we can take. Uh, this instrument has some fantastic reeds, so I'm actually borrowing from the cor anglais here on the solo, but an oboe, a crumb horn, a clarinet, all these things will work. It's some nice honky reeds, basically. to have that, it's almost like a harmonica, you know, it reminds me of Stevie Wonder or jazz fusion artists like Pat Metheny, that kind of smooth sound. So nice, smoother, honky reeds are always really fun. Um, here I do some mutations with a clarinet on the choir, which also works. Uh, let's see. So that kind of reeds are always great. And then I also like to have something for playing fast lines, something a little fluty. So yeah, like on an organ like this, where we have all these manuals, you can kind of have all these different sounds set up, various reeds, some nice flutes, some sesquialteras, all these kinds of things sound really nice for jazz. So really think nice, smooth sounds, but when it comes to melodies, you want something that has some energy in life, but isn't gonna get held back by too many mutations or too many principles. All right, let's talk a little bit about the voicings. So we have our sound, let's go back to our string sound. I'm gonna add the voix humaine to it, which is again, kind of a tradition from orchestral transcription playing where you combine your strings with uh, your voix humaine. So you get a kind of buzzing in the background. So let's talk about some voicings. So here's a simple C major chord. Not that jazzy, not that jazzy. But the first thing when it comes to jazz is thinking about adding extensions. So we add the seven, the nine. How about the sharp 11, the 13, right? So you can kind of stack up these chords. Same thing on a minor chord. Let's look at minor, A minor. Right, you can kind of stack these chords. And then when it comes to voicing them, the kind of way you want to arrange them to play on the organ is you just want to take some of those upper voices, those extensions, put them below. So here's our C major seven. Let's take these two extensions and put them down here. Now we're getting something a little bit more jazzy. Let's take out this C and replace it with a D. So it's like a nine and add two. And then we have our C in the bass, right? So we went from playing a C major like this to like this. Right, a lot more jazzy. You can do the same thing with all your minor chords. Here's an A minor chord with all those extensions. And then let's take all of this, bring it down here. And then you can just kind of fiddle it around. So let's take our seven and our five and seven, put them down the octave, put in the nine, like we did in the C major. Right, so we go from playing an A minor like this to like this. 
So it's really about kind of using extensions. You don't often need the root in the chord because the root is taken by the bass. So here's how I might play B major seven. No B in it, but we have the F sharp, the fifth, the A sharp, which is the seven. We have the C sharp, which is the two, the D, which is the three, and the G sharp, which is the six. Then you put your root there in the pedal. Then you can play something on B major. Let me turn it down a little bit. So when it comes to voicings, yeah, you want to avoid doing traditional closed triads. You want to add extensions and you want to kind of put them down the octave. Take out your roots. All those kinds of things will get you to some nice jazzy voicings. And the great thing about those jazzy voicings is it'll help you improvise too. Because if that's your voicing, you can play a melody line that outlines that voicing. I'm just outlining a chord there, but it sounds pretty jazzy. So the last thing I want to take us through is some improvisation. So we have some sounds, we have some chord voicings. Now what chords are we going to play? Luckily, jazz is derived, especially traditional jazz, is derived from traditional classical. The same progressions that you enjoy in Bach, you enjoy in jazz. And one of the most standard progressions in all of uh, tonal music is a 1, 6, 2, 5, 1. So let's go in C major. Here's our 1, the C, of course. And then we have our 6, which is A minor. And then our 2, which is D minor. And then our 5, which is G. And we're just going to go through those chords. We're going to C major to A minor to D minor to G7. Right, but then we have to make those voicings sound a little jazzy. So here are some of the voicings we used before for C major. Right, and then for the A minor, we also had this one. D minor, here's a different voicing. Here's D minor, seven, nine. We just take out the root. There you go, there's your D minor. And then you can just take these two notes and bring them down for the G7. So we can just kind of play those. C major, A minor, D, G. C major, A minor, D, G, one, six, two, five. It's a great progression. And of course, when you get a little bit more complex, you can think about the five of the five, the five of the six, but we'll come back to that. Let's start with the simple C major. So you solo over the C, you're just gonna play a C major. The A minor is also the same. Actually, the whole progression is kind of the same, which is nice. When you're, so you can kind of just play around Maybe with the first five notes. Right there, you're just kind of playing around with the notes. You're thinking C major, A minor, D minor, G, C major, A minor, D minor. And that's a great thing you can always do in jazz is kind of sliding around. Right, so let's, let's get a little bit even more jazzy. So instead of just going to an A minor, why don't we go to an A major so that that becomes the five of the D minor. And then let's add some extensions to our G. So we have the flat nine. We can add that in, that's the A flat, right? So we have our C, the A seven, so you can have the C sharp. And then you can go to your D minor which is just all the white keys again. And then we added our A flat into our G. Right, so you can kind of solo a little bit um, and using those four chords. Right, so that gets kind of fun. And um, the last little trick in that turnaround is instead of going back to the C at the end, you can go to E, right? Because if you're in D minor, and you're trying to go to set up to D minor, you have your two and your five of D minor. So we go, we start on C, then we have our five of D minor, D minor, G7. How about the, f the two of D minor now? And then the five of D minor, and then the D minor, and then the G. And then back to that E minor, Right, so you're just kind of using those sounds to play around. And 
Let's go back to our slightly fuller registration where we had some thicker chords. And yeah, I'll just uh, take you through some improv on that. Um, and so two fives, you can throw two fives in anywhere. That's another great thing to practice, is just practicing your two five ones. So if you're in B flat, that's gonna be C minor, F7, B flat, right? Practice it in different keys. And then here's the uh, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, one, six. Right, so you, there's a lot you can do and it's just about playing with those progressions and getting more used to playing those turnarounds. That helps a lot in jazz. 99% of jazz tunes are two fives to various keys. So once you can play every two five, two five to G, two five to B flat, two five to B, you know, once you can get around those two fives, it becomes a lot easier to play jazz. Okay, so why don't we ch take our little one six two five progression in C and try a bit of a pedal solo on it, which, you know, it's a fun little exercise for, for organists who like to use our feet, so. Let's give it a try. So first we just have to start playing the chords in our hands. So we have the C, the A, dominant seventh, the D minor, and then the G. All right. And then we can go back to the hands. So yeah, you can kind of take that progression, take it through your hands, take it through your feet, just to get comfortable. And then as you start to transpose it, take it to other keys, you'll find that playing jazz in general gets easier as you get comfortable playing through various two five ones, because that's really a, a foundation of jazz. So just a couple things about extensions, just to, just to be clear on that and just to finish off. Right, so when we had our C major extension, let me get some sound here. When we had our C major extension, there's our nine, we went to the sharp 11 with that F sharp. There's our 13. With the minor chords, yeah, you can, you can have that sharp 11 or you can leave it out entirely depending on the context, right? If you're playing in C major and you wanna kinda keep away from your F sharps, leave out that, that sharp 11, or that sharp 13 in this case on the A minor, right? So you have our three, five, seven, 9, 11, there's our sharp 13 if you want it or you leave it out, right? And then when it comes to playing dominant 7th chords with those voicings, dominant 7th, um, there's our 9, there's our 11. You can also put the sharp 11 or the flat 9 as we did in the G7. So you can get to some really extended chords. It's just about kind of altering those extensions to the flavor of your choosing. So um, the last two things I'll show you is just a classic ending lick. When you're done your jazz improvisation, you can give it one of these. It's just nice to know that lick, trust me, it'll come in handy. And uh, yeah, and just the, the shaking of chords, which I did there at the end. It's also just a nice little jazzy thing you can get into. So. Yeah, play around with those progressions, take some pedal solos, and try some of those figurations out for size and uh, have fun trying out some jazz. Thank you for joining us for another presentation in Organist Launchpad. And please do join my next segment, part two, where I'll be talking about playing avant-garde and contemporary classical music on the organ.